And how cool is it to have a bit of Hollywood here in Sacramento tonight? It is really fun for me. I've, I've been in this room for a few premieres and a few great events, even my friend's children's baptism here in this uh, exact theater. So there's a lot that happens in Sacramento here, and I am so grateful to have this film shown here just a couple blocks from the decision makers that we are discussing in this film. On a personal note, and I think this is important to say, you know, it doesn't matter, I tell kids all the time, it doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you end up. And I know Danny's gonna have some words, especially for the young people in the audience tonight. But I'd like to just talk for one minute about what generations mean. My own great grandma and grandma are from Boyle Heights, right? And I'm on the city council now, I'm the only woman on that city council. <laughs> I started out as a single mom. I earned a law degree. I believe I have made my ancestors proud, but they started right there too, in the exact same place that uh, you shot this film. And so I'm honored to stand here today and I get to do something very special on behalf of the city of Sacramento, although nothing would be as special as getting to see that film. That was the first time you saw it all the way through? All the way through, yeah. That's awesome. That's the first time too. Danny, this is a proclamation from the city of Sacramento. I know we're not your hometown, but we'd like to adopt you too, if that's all right. It reads like this. Danny Trejo is one of the most recognized names and faces in Hollywood, that is for sure, and a prolific actor who has worked on no less than four films and TV shows a year since 1990. That's impressive. Growing up on the streets of East LA in Echo Park, Danny Trejo experienced drugs and crime at an early age and spent the latter part of his youth and early adulthood incarcerated in California's most notorious jails. After his release from prison, Danny Trejo became involved in programs aimed at helping those who, like him, battled drugs and alcohol addictions. Danny Trejo's work as a drug counselor led to his first role on the film Runaway Train, and he has since starred in films such as these are big ones, man. That's some big films. Desperado, Con Air, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, the indie film Strike One, and From Dusk Till Dawn, Spy Kids, and Machete Franchise. <laughs> Although the road to success has been hard earned and anything but typical, through it all, Danny Trejo has developed a thriving career in the movie business and, more importantly, has donated countless hours to giving back to the community through his work with various youth groups and organizations throughout California. And therefore, guess what? Today is Danny Trejo Day in Sacramento, California. that did it, it was kind of a, a effort of love. Uh, you have big budget movies and you have big studio movies and you have like movies that that are that are low budget and just you know trying to uh, trying to make it you know and uh, they paid me most of their budget and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I love doing films like this. You know, I love doing film. People are just getting started, especially with this kind of message. I always talk. I talk to schools. I talk to uh, uh, institutions, youth authorities, wherever I can go. And and uh, that's the only reason today that I have the career that I have. Everything good that has happened in my life has happened as a direct result of help with someone else. And that's the God's honest truth. How did you get into the movies? You know what? I got a call at 11 o'clock at night from a kid that I was working with that was trying to stay clean. He called me up and said, hey, 1985, Danny, there's a lot of blow down here at my job. 
can you just come out and hang out with me? Just support me, please, I don't want to use. I said, you know, I'm there, because that's what I do. And I went down to his job thinking it was, because he was a warehouse, it was, a, it was an address for a warehouse. And uh, I went down there 11 o'clock at night, and it wasn't, it was the, uh, the movie set of a movie called Runaway Train with John Boyd and Eric Roberts. And to show you how Diosito worked in my life, this is all I've been doing. I got out of prison in 1969. This was 1985. All I've been doing was helping people. And that's how I lived my life. And I walked on this movie set, and I thought it was the cutest thing I'd ever seen in my life. It's like, all these guys were acting like like, yay, mother, watch out, do what I said. <laughs> like, trying to be hard, and it was, God, some of them, I was, come here, man, don't know what you be cool. It was like, they wanted to be hard. It was funny, and they all had fake tattoos. I kept going, oh, I'm sorry, I smeared your tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had, like, fake tattoos. And, and, uh, and, and it was funny, because they were all, like, you know, everything they said was, hey, watch out, Yeah. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> What's all that for? You know? and so this guy comes up and says, hey, do you want to be in this movie? And I said, what do I got to do? He said, do you want to be an extra? I said, extra what? <laughs> he says, can you act like a convict? <laughs> so I'm giving it a shot. <laughs> They give me a blue shirt, I put it on, I got that big tattoo on my chest, and, and it's so funny, everybody always says, what did that tattoo cost you? Like Ten years? <laughs> Get one. <laughs> and, and, so, and, 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 and so they said, leave, leave your shirt off. I'll never forget. This guy said, no, no, don't put your shirt on. So I left my shirt off. And he goes like this. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what barrio is that? <laughs> Change a sign and tell him my And this other guy comes up, a guy I recognize, he goes, uh, you're Danny Trejo. Well, yeah. He says, Danny, I saw you win the lightweight and the welterweight title up in San Quentin. I go, you're Eddie Bunker. He says, yeah, I was in prison with this guy. I said, what are you doing, Eddie? He said, I'm a writer. I, I, I adapted the screenplay. And I said, wow. He said, are you still boxing? I go, I'm training. He says, we need somebody to train one of the actors how to box. I said, what's it pay? He says, 320 a day. I said, how bad you want this to beat up? <laughs> and I gotta beat him up every day. <laughs> and he's real high strung. You gotta be careful. He might sock you. I said, for $320, give him a steak, homie. <laughs> I started training an actor named Eric Roberts out of box for the movie Broadway Train. The director saw me. Now listen, the director saw that I could follow directions, saw that I was easy to work with, saw that I was polite. All the things that I learned, I was polite. All the things that I never used to be, saw the things that I considered others. And he comes over, Andre Kajalowski, a Russian aristocrat. They told me that. His grandfather wrote the Russian national anthem. I don't know. I don't never heard of the Russian anthem. <laughs> and then he said his, his father had pictures hanging in the Louvre. I thought the Louvre was a bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> I found out it was a, like a, 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 a big museum in Paris. <laughs> and so he comes over and real soft spoken, he goes, You be in movie. You fight Eric in movie. And you be my friend. Ever says, He's not saying you can sag as the union. He's not saying you can't do that. Andre says, make him sag. <laughs> and, and, and we be friends. And I said, okay. And then he leaned over and he kissed me on one cheek, kissed me on the other cheek, and walked away. I told Eddie, Eddie, I'm going to train the kid for 320, but if I'm going to be kissing that old man, I want more baby. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let me tell you something. Everything that I have done, everything good that has happened to me, has happened as a direct result of helping someone else. When I talk in schools, I tell them the worst three words in the English language for uh, for Mexicanos is "Where are you from?" That's what we always say. "Where are you from?" I don't care where you're from. Tell me how you're doing in school. Yeah. You understand? I don't care where you're from. Don't matter to me. You know? And it's like you. Hey, I'm from here. I don't care. How are you doing in school? Who do you help today? 
Hey, how's your little brother doing? Is he following in your footsteps? You want him to go right to youth authority with you? Fool! <laughs> see, I've been there, been there, homie, been in, see, all, man, I have seen so much potential being wasted in our California youth authorities, in our prisons. My little primo, my primo, Gilbert, 17 years old, went to the pen in 1979. Thank God Governor Jerry Brown just approved his parole. Wow. This kid missed all the 80s, 90s, and imagine, I mean, 53 years old. And just, I said, what happened? I remember 1979, what happened? Hey, we were just partying. Damn. That's a whole lot. So now, now it's my job to make sure he has a job, make sure he's, everything. Everything I do for anybody comes back tenfold. Remember that. I don't want to know how bad you are. I don't want to know how bad you are. I don't want to know how who you think you are. I don't want to know how, how bad your neighborhood is. I want to know. Saturday, we ended up collecting money. I'm Sunday, we ended up collecting money, bought a thousand pairs of socks, bought a uh, thousand t-shirts, a thousand long johns, and I, everywhere I go, I always collect all the soaps and, and shampoos from the hotel. We <laughs> cast them out to the homeless. And do you know how great we felt? Do you know how absolutely great we felt? Do you know how great we felt? And everybody thinks, what do you got, what do you got, how do I help? Anything, help your little brother with his homework, help your sister, or get them to help you. <laughs> but you know what, I, 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 I want to thank the mayor, I want to thank, I want to thank the David, the guy that did this movie, the producer. I feel so, I feel absolutely so, so grateful every morning. Every morning I wake up, my prayers are just to Lord, please let me help somebody today. Thank you very much. God bless you.